Hi, uh, greetings and welcome to another episode of Marvel Mini Odd Showcases. And uh, today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Princess Pocket Homes by Princess Stompe. And as always, I'm your host, Dr. Elf Guy. And yes, this is another house mod that we're going to be taking a look at today. I know we've been uh, covering a fair number of house mods recently. But you know, the fact of the matter is, is that there's just so many house mods out there. And uh, so many new ones keep getting released. And so uh, we're basically playing perpetual catch up, just trying to feature newer house mods in our series on our online showcases. Meaning we never do, you know, quite get around to uh, featuring these smaller and older, you know, multi-home house mods from the early and uh, mid-2000s, which is, you know, kind of why we're uh, covering more of these house mods in Morrowind's mini mod showcases. Because, you know, they're good mods, and they may well be what you're looking for, so they deserve to be covered. And in the case of Princess Pocket Homes here, uh, this one adds five new pocket dimensional homes uh, for you to acquire. And as always, before we get started, you'll find the mod download links down in the uh, video description below. And anyway, just getting started here, as I already mentioned, this mod adds uh, pocket dimensional homes for you to find. And uh, because they're in a pocket dimension, the only way to access them is by a uh, way of five special amulets hidden somewhere out in the world. And uh, some of these you can purchase from NPCs, like uh, this one for 2,000 gold, while others are being carried by dangerous creatures, and yet others are locked up and are surrounded by guards that you'll have to steal. Uh, once you do get one of these amulets, though, uh, you can use it to summon a companion rat, who will offer transportation to your new home, as well as several cities around Vardenfell. And uh, this rat can be summoned anywhere, whether out in the wilderness or in the middle of a town, which is, you know, a handy convenience feature for when you uh, really need to unload some loot. And now we're going to be taking a quick look at each of these five pocket homes, and they all have, you know, different and unique themes. As you can uh, see here by the Ashlander abode, which is basically a large Ashlander tent with some storage, a cooking fire in the middle, with a chair to lounge in, a bathing area, a couple of tables and bookshelves that you can use for, you know, displaying items, and of course a master bed. And each abode comes with a companion rat that can teleport you back to the world, with her transportation to a number of cities. And it should be noted that these pocket homes are companion friendly, uh, since they do use these uh, transportation services. And uh, just moving on, we're next going to be taking a look at a uh, Daedric-themed pocket home. And uh, this is one of the smaller abodes that you can get. It's a fairly small one-room Daedric flat with a table, master bed, and a couple of containers for storage. But there's not really a whole lot else here. And uh, there's also a warrior-themed slash uh, Ray Doran style pocket home. That's a bit more on the uh, larger side. Though by the same token, it's a bit difficult to acquire, involving killing a fairly dangerous creature to get it. But anyway, it has a lounge as well as a downstairs dining room, complete with a barkeep who has about uh, 400 to 500 bartering gold to, you know, trade with. So you can bring your latest batch of loot here to be sold, which is, you know, a rather convenient feature. And uh, there's also a training room and master bedroom with uh, more than a fair bit of storage. And of course, you could always repurpose the uh, dining room for displaying items if you so desire. And uh, anyway, one of my personal favorite homes in this batch is the mage-themed and sort of treehouse-style pocket home, which includes a large set of chambers with a dining area, or a display area if, you know, you use it for that purpose on the uh, first floor, a uh, roaring fireplace, an alchemy lab, uh, storage for various ingredients, including an ingredient sorter, an NPC who can provide you with alchemical goods, as well as 500 water and gold, and the entire place is nicely finished and decorated without going overboard. Uh, there is a fair amount of open space in here for you to add your own furniture if you have a, uh, you know, furniture mod installed. And on the second floor, you'll find a bathing chamber, as well as some storage, uh, your rat companion who can, again, offer you transportation to the four major cities on Vardenfell, and again, a lot more open space for your own utilization. And uh, finally, at the uh, top of this pocket tree house, you'll find the master bedroom, uh, which comes complete with a roaring fireplace, a couch to lounge on, and a couple of containers and a set of bookshelves for storage. Uh, the whole interior here is uh, fairly cozy, and the atmosphere is just that right amount of magical to, you know, really make this uh, feel like a major's home. But uh, moving on, we do have one last uh, pocket house to look at here, and uh, that's the, uh, you know, sort of thief-themed pocket dwelling, which is uh, really a fairly large set of cabins with a number of furnishings, and of course containers to make it feel a little bit more, you know, hospitable. And while this pocket home is divided off into uh, several different uh, cavern chambers, uh, you'll find a bathing area, a uh, bed to sleep in, and a small dining area in the uh, first cavern here. Uh, not to mention plenty of containers to store your stuff into. There's also another NPC who can uh, provide you with a few uh, basic services, including uh, 500 bartering gold. And aside from that, there's also some, you know, more storage and display space in here. And off to the side, you'll find a large cavern that has a master bed in it. And all in all, these pocket homes are all unique with uh, different features for each one. And while we didn't go into much detail about it here, they all have uh, different requirements and challenges to unlock them. 
so they're not, you know, just strictly speaking, uh, free. You do have to earn them. And this is just a nice, low impact housing mod that should be compatible with just about everything, including Mario and Rebirth. And anyway, that wraps up everything for this episode of our mini mod showcases. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.